All right, so we're in Fremantle, Perth, Western Australia, and here you see the Government of Western Australia Department of Communities. Housing, the housing department. You see the word housing there, and you see the word communities um, right side by side. I got the torch on, so it might look a bit bright. But here's an interesting thought I was thinking recently. If you, if you actually wanted to promote... What's it? Kidnapping van. Kidnapping van? Oh shit. <laughs> now they're people that do not help foster a sense of community. Um, well, but you know it does help foster. They, they instill fear in the community. Like, <laughs> yeah, and then preventative measures can be placed and <laughs> the police can help us better hold hands and skip down the <laughs> daisy field. And blanket, and blanket, and you. But yeah, here's a better way that you can incorporate a sense of community through your housing infrastructure. This is an idea I discussed with you last week. Very well, very well. Well, I'm not gonna Imagine, because you know, I we when I was in high school, we had to do this thing where we had to find someone that lived in our suburb for more than 50 years, and then talk to them about cultural changes that they had experienced in their in that 50 years. And I happened to be our next door neighbour, forget his name, but he basically explained the cliche but true cliche for a reason story that back in the day they didn't have all these walls up everywhere. People could walk, water their lawn and say hello to their neighbour. And, you know, there was so much trust and lack of paranoia and caution and fear in general that people would be comfortable leaving the doors unlocked and the neighbor would bake an apple pie and leave it on the table of the neighbor, just help himself inside because we're all friends here. We're all a community. And that's the way it was. And then he reckons that when they started putting up the walls, you stopped saying hello to the neighbor and people started getting more, more finicky, panicky, and then crime rates actually... Da -da 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 -da. Don't know why I'm looking at this guy. Hey. Bloomed, blossomed. Bloomed, blossomed, exactly. They excelled, they increased. And, um, and that's the thing you find in psychology is interesting. Whenever you put a preventative measure in place, it usually ends up inciting and causing, if not being a catalyst for and perpetuating, the very thing that you're trying to prevent with that preventative measure. It makes it worse. And you think about it, it's like when you're dating somebody and let's say it's a partner that's super paranoid and they think, oh, you're always suspecting that you're cheating. Every time you leave to hang out with your mates, they're like, is there going to be a girl there? Uh -huh. You know, and they're always super, super, super paranoid. And typically it's because these people themselves might be of the mind to cheat and whatnot. So they think, well, if I would do it, he probably is too. You know what I mean? That's one part of it. But, um, but the thing is, when you start acting like that and you start getting super paranoid, it actually makes it worse and gives the person cause to end up fulfilling that prophecy and cheating on your ass. Because they're thinking, well, why the fuck should I, at this party I'm at right now, turn down this beautiful, very attractive and intelligent person that's hitting on me and we're getting on like a house on fire? Typically I would. But my partner doesn't even trust me. They expect that I'm doing this anyway, whether or not I actually am. So what, if they already think it, and accuse me of it, or expect it, then why don't I just fucking do it? And then they do it. And then the, and then the person ends up being all like, eh, see, my paranoia is justified. My caution is justified. Yeah. The exact same phenomenon occurs with putting up the walls, putting all these yeah. regulations yeah. and penalties, Long and illegalizing, yeah. prohibiting things. The things you prohibit, you end up just accelerating whilst creating dissent between the people and the, between those who fear the criminals and those who think, oh, fuck you, you put up a wall. What are you hiding, cunt? What, you don't trust us? You think we're going to jump your wall and steal your shit? Well, fuck you. If you already think that the world is made of criminals to justify your walls, then I may as well justify the money you put up building that wall by climbing over it and stealing what you're obviously hiding. And that's what that whole thing creates, more wars. So we looked back there at the whole community's infrastructure, housing. Here's an idea. Connect all of the houses, like duplexes and whatnot. Connect them all up in rows, all right? Get rid of the fences for one. Now, you can have them double walled so it's not too noisy and all that. You gotta be, you know, logical about it. But here's my idea I propose. Totally revolutionary way to actually instill a cohesive sense of community through housing infrastructure. Connect all the houses and build two doors. One door here and one door just in front of it between the, the walls of each separate home. 
all right? And basically what this would allow the possibility of and even encourage implicitly just by being set up this way would be for the neighbor to actually get to know thy neighbor, to gain trust in thy neighbor, maybe establish rapport and let a friendship blossom instead of crime blossoming. Let mm -hmm. friendship and community blossom, not criminal behavior. And then you know what, when you say, okay, I trust you. Here, you can have the key. Or, you know, I'll, I'll open my door at certain times. And if you find that you open up your side and your door and you find my door is locked, that just means I'm busy or whatever, want privacy, whatever. But if you open up your door and you find that their door is open too, then that is an open invitation, naturally, to, to come in and socialize. And in this way, you're actually bringing back that village aspect of us all in a circle with TPs, if you know what I mean. And I use that example because Indians are all about song and dance and kumbaya ring together and rejoicing in this gift of life and sharing that gift with each other intimately. And it's not all and scalps and shit or whatever. Besides scalping each other, I mean, no one's perfect. <laughs> but um, but they weren't so hung up on privacy that they sacrificed all sense of intimacy. And if if they're talking about right, right. This, this this center for communities and housing, I think by separating everyone into these blocks and then putting up these walls higher and higher, and the news and blah 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 blah, fear mongering, it's not fostering anything but more dissonance within the individuals, more dissent between the groups. But if we actually link the houses and door by door allow and encourage the opportunity to unite and to become an actual proper neighborhood community, that is when you will see great change because we are building infrastructure that reflects these principles and these opportunities instead of building infrastructure which reflects and enforces one thing law enforcement and what does law enforcement require for itself to be relevant and functional for us to need it what does law enforcement require well it requires criminals it requires crime and there is an intimate relationship there between the criminals and those who set the crime legislations and enforce them that reflects a much deeper level of intimacy than any of us actual people wanting to unite will ever experience because of it. Now there's some food for thought. Yeah.